and welcome to Studio 5. We are still all in this together and we pray this show will bring a smile to your face. We've got a film director as well as a Disney animated film release and an independent recording artist with some great music to share as well. But to get things started, let's do like we do every week, counting down the top five headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are your first two. At number five. How about a little something to try to make us all feel a little bit better? Celebrity friends of media mogul Tyler Perry answer his singing challenge, looking to bring a smile to people's faces in the face of the COVID-19 crisis. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got the believers and non-believers. In his hands, he's got the little bitty babies in his hands. Tyler Perry also pays a visit to this Atlanta restaurant for takeout and leaves a $500 tip for each of the 42 out of work servers for a total of $21,000. He's got you and me in his hands. Yeah, At number four, the stories of heroic healthcare workers and others will be highlighted. Television networks unite to shine a light on the stories of those on the front lines in the fight against the deadly coronavirus. ABC, NBC, and CBS teaming up for One World Together at Home, a massive special hosted by Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, and Stephen Colbert. Lady Gaga will curate the music acts, which will feature Stevie Wonder, Billie Eilish, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Lizzo, and more. One World Together at Home will be broadcast around the globe and also stream on Apple, Hulu, Instagram, and many other platforms. It airs Saturday night, April 18th. And so begins our countdown this week. We'll get to number three in just a little bit. The COVID-19 pandemic has canceled or delayed quite a few things in Hollywood, including the release of the film, The Grizzlies. We've already given you a first look at the film, but this week we're sitting down with the director who turned this true story into a major motion picture. Before we share that interview, here's a quick look back at the film. It's a bad scene for a lot of the kids up here, eh? What's being done? You lived up here a long time? 6,000 years. Welcome to the edge of the world. We have 21 students in your class. Miranda Atatahak. Shani Ignat Ignat Pogot. Ignat Palgot. Sorry. <laughs> Jason Midovic. He's not coming back. Another night out in the call. I put a word to my neck as I froze. My team really with it, get hit it, get with it. No limit when I get back under the road. No. These kids, they need an outlet to get involved in something besides this night culture. Sports. What are you to say what we need? <laughs> hey, bud, you want to come check out lacrosse Wednesday after school? Flyers won't work. You got to show respect there. Eh? You guys like sports, huh? I don't like to run. Let's turn down the suck and turn up the good. Now, are you with me? Yeah! Um, we got a bit of a problem. They don't want me going to a white man's school. He has to hunt. His family is starving. We don't need to defend our way of life to a southerner. Family comes first, not school. That's a white man's game. You don't want them reaching for something that they care about? There's a cost for reaching. Haven't you figured out yet that I don't know what I'm doing? This is not about you. All of us have made sacrifices to be here. We've been dealing with this stuff for years and we're still here. Instead of drinking or fighting, we are proud, strong, full of hope. Who are we? And that is just a tiny sample of the gripping story in the Grizzlies and its director. Miranda DePoncier joins us now with more on this film. What an amazing story. First, how did you come to this? Uh, well, I was sent an ESPN news piece um, about these young kids in the Arctic who'd been transforming their lives um, through sport, and I was just deeply moved, and um, and I 
agreed. I it was sent to me by by a few producers, and I and um, and I thought. Um, it would make a great movie. Uh, tell me about casting for this film, because people may be surprised at the experience level of some of these actors in the movie. You know, 10 years ago when we started this journey, uh, you couldn't just call up the casting directors and, and say, find me the top 10 young indigenous actors. So we need to go, needed to go and find them. And we ended up um, really wanting every kid in the Arctic to get a chance to audition for the film. So we went to a number of communities, flew into communities, sent cameras to communities, and ultimately got 600 auditions from all over the Arctic Circle. And then we flew 60 of those kids to the Eastern Arctic to a series of workshops. Mm. And we taught um, throat singing and drum dancing and a number of um, Inuit arts, as well as uh, filmmaking, photography, and acting. And at the end of that week, we said to everyone, hey, if you want to audition for the film, you can. Yeah. And so it was more really an arts workshop that the young people could take that knowledge back to their communities, whether or not, whether or not they ended up in the film. Amazing. Let's talk about the teacher, the gentleman who the story is, is, is based on. Um, what did you take away from him and his story? I mean, an amazing gentleman. He's incredible. And, you know, I think the great thing about Russ Shepard was he learned on this journey. This was not a movie about a teacher who um, who taught these young people something. This is a movie about these young people humbling and teaching this teacher something. And he was open enough to, um, to, to be able to listen to his students. One of the biggest things I took from Russ was he said that um, he always got more out of the kids than, than, than they got out of him. And one of the ways he was able to do that, and one of the reasons this program was lasting, is he made sure that it was student run, it was student led, it came from them. Mm. So it was really about um, giving space to those kids to nurture their own leadership. Mm. So it certainly changed him. I think if I read correctly, in the end, he stayed longer than he anticipated? He did. He was just going up for, for a year or two, and he ended up staying for seven years. And <laughs> He's a lawyer, but he keeps saying he wants to go back and be the principal of the school now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great dream indeed. So what lessons did you take away from this? What did you learn about these young people that changed you? It's really hard to put it into a soundbite. Mm -hmm. I was profoundly changed by... I mean, it was a 10-year project, and I learned a lot. Um, I had never spent time in an indigenous community before I made this film. I thought I was making a sports drama, and it ended up being so much more. And I had, um, I had suffered from depression in high school, and sports had really helped me through, so I was initially attracted to the project for that reason. Mm. But ultimately, all the kids that I worked with um, the kids I met in the workshop, the kids that ended up acting in the film, and frankly, the entire community that I worked with uh, was constantly teaching me mm. <laughs> both about um, about indigenous culture and um, and how much as you know in North America we we made a lot of mistakes. Um, our government made a lot of mistakes for many years. Um, but also just about resilience um, in the face of of tough, issues. Um, these young people are able to talk about what's going on in their lives. They don't feel shame about um, the difficult things that are going on, and they find this way to stay positive through it. And um, that's, you know, mm. we're all facing challenges um, in life. It's, it's good to remember to have faith and hope to keep it, keep, keep, Keep going. Indeed. Last question for you. What is it that kept you going for 10 years to get this movie made? I mean, you could have walked away, given up. What kept you going for 10 years? There was just something, there was something in meeting those kids, the real kids, uh, on my first trip up to the Arctic, where they said, um, they said that they weren't sure if they wanted to give me their life rights because they didn't know if they wanted their community to remember how tragic things had been before the Grizzlies program started. Wow. And, uh, and they said, but if the movie doesn't get made, they could go back there again. And if this film can help other young people through tough times and make healthy choices, 
then they want to see the film made. And they were speaking from such a deep place, such a place of pain um, in their community, and, and also such a place of sort of hope that they'd found a way through that I thought, at that point, I knew I had an obligation to make this film to try to inspire other young people the way that these people had inspired me. Mm, I love that. This will say never again, and hope is certainly in all of our future. Miranda, thank you so much for your time. The film thank is called The Grizzlies. We'll keep an eye out for it when it's in theaters. Thanks so much. Still to come. Bad dragon. Back to your lair. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Adult Man. The love. A behind the scenes look at Onward. It's about kindness, it's about love, ultimately. Through the eyes of the all-star cast. Number three. A new soldier in the streaming wars, Quibi, launched Monday with shows from big names including Jennifer Lopez, Chrissy Teigen, Chance the Rapper, and more. And Quibi CEO Jeffrey Katzenberg admits this is a unique time for the new streaming service to launch. But he's hopeful Hollywood will survive and thrive. It's a very entrepreneurial world, and so today you sit here and you say, okay, well, the challenges in front of them are staggering. But there are challenges that are staggering in front of dozens and dozens of businesses and industries today. But in the long run, we as an industry will pivot to now figure out how do we deal with the new world, the new environment that we that we live in. And Hollywood has done this multiple times over multiple decades. And they'll do it again. At number two. Action comedy starring Ed Helms on Netflix. And I said, I'm in. And then I read the script. And I was like, thank God it's good. In an interview from her home, Actress Taraji P. Henson takes a break from promoting her newest Netflix project. Might be busier than I thought. Just gotta check with the captain. I might have some paperwork. Guys, just... if you don't want to do it, just say so. And offers words of comfort in the face of the COVID-19 confinement. I would have to say to everyone out there, these are strange times with a lot of gray areas and unknowns. And in those times, I know we get scared. Try not to lean into fear. Try to find the positive in this. Everything happens for a reason, whether we understand it or not. And just try to find your peace in this. Just keep your mental together. Take care of yourself. Well, that leaves us with only one more story in this week's countdown. We'll get to the number one headline in just a little bit. You know, this pandemic has pushed many things back in the world of entertainment, but it's also moved some things up on the calendar. Disney's latest Pixar animated movie Onward, which was just in theaters a few weeks ago, is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Onward is a fantasy world. We're talking orcs, elves, manticores. It's a world that was very much at one point populated by magic. Do you know, in the old days, centaurs could run 70 miles an hour? I own a vehicle. Ah! <sighs> Don't need to run. Magic has been replaced by technology. It's something of the past. I call it the light bulb. So now all of these magical creatures are doing very mundane things. Somebody help me! These griffin nuggets were supposed to go out minutes ago! My character loves the idea of magic in the world. I have something for you from your dad. This brings him back. Like back to life? The film Onward is a tale of two brothers trying to finally meet their father. I'm gonna meet dad? They perform this spell, which will hopefully bring their dad back. Hang on! It's a pretty great concept that has so much heart. Dad? Ah! 
There's no top part. And that's exactly what Pixar does so well. We've only got 24 hours to bring back the rest of Dad. When Chris got the role, he called Tom and said, I'm your brother. <laughs> this is so fun, Tom. It is fun. The best part of the job was the fact that I got to do it with my buddy Chris. For any spell to work, you have to speak from your heart's fire. Olaf Delavar. Heart's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love these two whippersnappers. And as the mother of two teenage boys, I have that in common with Laurel because that's been the joy of my life. Now take out the trash. Family is important. I'm looking for my sons. Oh, they went on a quest. But don't worry. I told them about the map. I told them about the gym. I told them about the curse. <gasps> I forgot to tell them about the curse. The what? This definitely pulls at the heartstrings. I just want to meet you. That's why I love Pixar movies. You always walk away feeling like you've been a part of something real. <laughs> at Pixar, we're really encouraged to tell personal stories. My father passed away when I was a year old. So when you're making a personal story, you get to delve into something that's real and encouraging for other people. You can do this. I believe in you. It's moving because it's rooted in real relationships. And that's the fun of making one of these movies is, at some point, it's the story of all the people who helped make it. And then it becomes the story of all the people who watch it. My brother is a wizard! Onward was just in theaters and at the top of the box office, but it is now streaming to your home on Disney+. Plus. Before we take a quick break right here, we would like to share a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 snapshot. Hashtag... Outfit of the day, hashtag vintage store owner, and hashtag blessed. Most. Grandma's about to be an influencer, baby. And how was your day, Kid Chaos? Um, the usual. Uh oh. An 11 year old boy charts a surprising journey and becomes a professional wrestling superstar with a little help. Was it Trevor? You just let me know. I'll come up to that school and open up a can of you know what. Okay, Stone Cold Steve Austin style. <laughs> the granny got hands. This fun can be found in the new film, The Main Event. It begins streaming on Netflix Friday. And it's this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Up next. The Clark sisters have a long and amazing life story to share. Dorinda, who is you singing to, cats? The song is about suffering, right? You're talking to people suffering. You're trying to help somebody, right? I thought I was, mama. You thought wrong. Find out where and when you can see it next. <laughs> Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super balls, man. Come with... Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. At number one. Greg and Dorinda, what y'all over there sniggling about? Don't think because your daddy is a deacon in this church, I won't put you and my daughter out of here with a quickness. Sorry, man. A scene from this coming Saturday's right. Lifetime movie, where these actresses are bringing the sound and story of some gospel music legends to life. In the biopic, The Clark Sisters, First Ladies of Gospel. Jackie, Dorinda, Denise, Karen, y'all come down here. Come on, Twinkie. One, two. One, two, three, and... Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The singing cast includes Kiara Shear, a gospel recording artist in her own right, and the daughter of Karen Clark Shear. 
in this movie, it's all about family. It really did start for my mom, Dr. Maddie Oscar. My mom was a gospel recording artist, had three gold records. My mother was just a pioneer. What you see in us today is what she lived in front of us. It's like a story to encourage others. Don't give up on your dreams, no matter the challenges. Queen Latifah said, oh my goodness, you're our inspirational today. When you see such great artists as Beyonce and Jay-Z Jay on stage singing mm -hmm. our songs. Such an honor. The world will see how God gave us the gift through our mom, mm -hmm. and it comes to fruition through my daughter, her granddaughter mm -hmm. now yeah. being yeah. in this movie. It's going to be a great moment. That wraps this week's countdown and brings us to a bright spot. Madison Warner is a recording artist who can single-handedly create a full band and pen an unforgettable folk tune. This Virginia native is this week's Studio 5 Bright Spot. In reading your bio, I see you describe yourself as a multi-instrumentalist. What does that mean? Yeah, so it's kind of, I'm not really an expert at anything, but a jack of all trades, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So I play quite a few different instruments. I played a lot of the instruments that you hear on the album, the guitar, the piano, the mandolin, and the banjo, and uh, did all the vocals and harmonies and things like that. Where did the love for music start for you? You tell me I was blind. So I think I, I started playing guitar and piano, and... Um, and I just really love those things. And I started writing music uh, probably when I was about 12. And I would never play anything I wrote <laughs> from that age. But I started to love to create with music at about that age. And just really realized that I just didn't want to do anything else with my life. Would you describe songwriting and performing as a spiritual experience? How would you describe what that makes you feel like? A lot of the songs are very like spirit inspired and are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I have a song that I am going to play for you guys, Stowaway. So I called you a foolish. And that is just kind of about my coming to Christ as an older teenager. Oh, Stowaway. Tell me more about, um, I guess, the writing process behind that. Where were you? What gave birth to the idea that this is a song? I just felt like when I was a teenager, I, I was on the worship band. I was doing the, I was going to church. I was doing the Christian things. So I felt like I was like slipping by, or like I was earning my way to salvation, and um, just like the Lord just breaking in and breaking me down, and like you can't earn this love. You just can't. And. I remember that just spoke to me the most and I wrote on that and I just like the lyrics just kind of poured out within a week. Wow. Um, so that's kind of how that came to be. What is it about that particular song, Stowaway, that you think is resonating with people so well? It just resonates with a, a desire to be loved with without conditions. I feel like even people who might not be within like the Christian perspective or have a relationship with Jesus would listen to it and have kind of that same aching desire of we all want unconditional love that you can't earn or or throw away. And um, so I think it resonates with people and melodically it has become one of my favorite songs and a lot of people enjoy it for those reasons alone. Once lost, but now you have been found. And Madison's music is available right now on multiple platforms. Be sure to check it out. Moments away. It's a love you cannot earn. A final word from the musical Madison Warner. This love will not be earned. Too often we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club.
Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. And welcome back to Studio 5, where there is a weekly soundtrack playing as we put this show together. And this week, we're turning to Kiara Sheard, who is playing her mom, Karen Clark, in the new Lifetime biopic on the Clark Sisters. Kiara is a recording artist in her own right, and her latest song, It Keeps Happening, is what's playing in my ear. It keeps happening for me. Great word and song. You can be sure to catch Kara this weekend in the Lifetime Clark Sisters movie, The First Ladies of Gospel. Time now to take a look ahead to see what's coming up on Studio 5. Come next week. I'm going to destroy all music except for rock. Our world becomes so vast. It's exciting to see how we can play up on all the different musical styles. Justin Timberlake takes Studio 5 behind the music for the fun-filled Trolls World Tour. Oh, y'all got me set off now. We don't slack. With an amazing cast of musical talent. The beauty of working on music for animated films is you can be as far out as you want to be. <clears throat> well, that was very beautiful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week. Certainly hope you'll join us for that. As for this week, we're giving the final word to Madison Warner. I was 17 and I had just come back from my first missions trip. Mm -hmm. And it was in Africa. My job over there was to take care of sick and premature infants. You get to have breakthrough and you get to watch kids get healed and sometimes it doesn't work out and you have to, you just get a front row seat to the worst tragedies ever. And I came home. Everyone tell, told me about the culture shock going to Africa, but no one warned me about the culture shock coming back. I was just overwhelmed with like this weight of the world that I knew about. And I just feel like everyone's aware of so much. Like we talk about awareness of kids in Africa, awareness of breast cancer, awareness of just fill in the blank, uh, autism awareness. And I just feel like there's not a person in the world who's not aware of poverty in Africa. I love that we spread awareness for these things, but I want it to be followed with action. And that's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.